To continue our notes on section 1.6, paragraph proofs, we'll start with example 3. It is given that angle 3 is obtuse and that angle 7 is also obtuse. So we want to go ahead and write down our given information and then think about how we want to reach our conclusion. What we want to conclude is that angle 3 is congruent to angle 7. Now, my question for you is, is that possible? Can angle 3 be congruent to angle 7? Well, if the two angles are obtuse, yeah, that's possible. Is it true all of the time? Because remember, when we want to prove something or conclude something with these proofs, we want to prove that it's true every single time or that it works all of the time. Is this one true all of the time? No. And let's talk about why. So based off of the definition of an obtuse angle, which we discussed earlier in the chapter, we know that if an angle is an obtuse angle, then it has a measure that is greater than 90 degrees, but less than 180 degrees. So if we wanted to represent our angle with x, we say that x must be between 90 and 180. So thus, since angles 3 and 7 are both obtuse, let's provide what we call a counterexample to show that although this may be true, if both angles do have the same measure, yes, they are congruent, but we can have two of two singles with different measures. So for example, we can say that the measure of angle three is, let's choose an angle that's obtuse. Let's see, so the measure of angle three, let's say it's 110 degrees. That still fits in the restrictions of an obtuse angle. It's greater than 90, but less than 180 degrees. That works, okay, so let's say the measure of angle three is 110 degrees. But also, since angle seven is obtuse, let's come up with, the measure of another angle. Let's see, so another obtuse angle would be 131 degrees. That works. So angles 3 and 7 are both obtuse based off of our definition of an obtuse angle, with angle 3 being 110 degrees and angle 7 being 131 degrees, yet they're not congruent. So it satisfies our given information, but it does not satisfy the conclusion. Therefore, this conclusion has just been proved false. It could work sometimes if both angles had the same measure, but all we were given was that each angle is obtuse. So just because the two angles are obtuse does not mean that they are congruent as the counterexamples show. Moving on to example four. In example four, we're given that angle one is acute, and we're given that angle eight is a right angle. And we want to prove that angle one is congruent to angle eight. Hmm. So let's go ahead and write down our given information. It is given that angle one is acute, and then it is also given that angle eight is a right angle. Let's look at what we want to prove in the end. So we want to prove that those two angles are congruent. So let's think about that. K 
can this be proven? Can we say that an acute angle is congruent to a right angle? Can that happen? No. But let's explain why. So once again, we want to pretend that someone who does not know a thing about geometry is going to read this proof and understand, which means if the person didn't know what an acute angle is, we have to explain what an acute angle is and what a right angle is. So since angle 1 is an acute angle, let's go ahead and write down the definition of an acute angle. If an angle is an acute angle, then it has a measure that is greater than 0 degrees and less than 90 degrees. So an acute angle has a measure that's between 0 degrees and 90 degrees. So if we wanted to represent our angle with x, we know that x must be between 0 and 90. must be greater than 0 and less than 90. Thus we can say the measure of angle 1, since that's our acute angle that's given, it must be greater than 0 but less than 90. Now let's talk about the right angle that we're given, and let's explain what a right angle is. So if an angle is a right angle, we're using one of our reasons. Remember, these if-then statements are the reasons that we typed down in section 1.4, or excuse me, that I typed out, but then you wrote down. So if an angle is a right angle, then it has a measure of 90 degrees. Exactly. So that means that if x were to represent our angle, x must equal 90. Thus, the measure of angle 8 must be 90 degrees exactly. But based off of those given restrictions of an acute angle being in between 0 and 90, it must be less than 90 degrees. And our right angle is exactly 90 degrees. These restrictions do not allow those two angles to have the same measure. They can't be congruent. So based off of the restrictions of an acute angle, the measure of angle 1 will never be exactly 90 degrees. Therefore, angle 1 is not congruent to angle 8. And just like example 3, we were able to prove this conclusion false. So please be aware of these types of proofs.